Greetings, and welcome to Spider Man Ports Channel. This time, another wonderful Super Nintendo game Final Fantasy Mystic Quest by Squaresoft. The game is in playable condition. We'll take it apart, clean those contact pads, and uh, we'll check the battery, make sure you know this saves and has good saves on it. We may um, postpone on the, um, the replacement of the batteries, but you know, let's see if the board has plenty of space for this one right here. Go ahead and put that in there. Yeah, I hope you're all having a wonderful day, because I know I am. Well, last night was amazing. I got to go out, and I went singing karaoke with a bunch of friends at my local VFW. And I don't know if you all have heard or not, but the previous location for our VFW ended up having a terrible fire and burnt it down. Let's make sure we get this real quick. Color combination. If you want to skip that over again, you got blue goes with blue, white goes with white, and the yellow goes with the yellow in Mystic Quest. Alright. Yeah, we'll definitely have to polish up those contact pads. Just admiring the board, checking it over, making sure we have everything. I'll flip it over, make sure you guys get the numbers as well. Checking for like corrosion on any of these components. I'll rotate it around now so you guys can see it and get those numbers on the side. You got them? I think you do. Boop. Alright, so this is a 90 board. Or a 1990 board. We have a um, Super Mario World that is like this as well. That is awesome. Yeah, I don't see any corrosion along the battery. I see a little bit of flux, but you know, we clean that up every time we see it. Come on, camera focus. There we go. I may change this color combination to uh, the blue here and the yellow on the opposite side so that we don't have that focus problem. But yeah, this is a really cool one. Now, I remember the Final Fantasy Mystic Quest from back in the day because it was... Um, it was given to me as a birthday present. Not this particular copy, no, I'm, that one's long gone. It was sold off as part of the collection. And then we ended up uh, receiving that year after we sold off all of our Super Nintendo and Nintendo stuff. We ended up with Game Boys. And you know, I, I gotta tell you, man, it, it was a good trade. It really was. Back in the day, when you're looking at, um, you've already beaten all your Super Nintendo games, you're kind of tired of it, and you see what was available on the Game Boy. And it's portable, playable, you can take it to school, you can play on the bus. I mean, I'm just saying, cause it, it was pretty awesome. And then, that, that's when it started to become a problem with finding um, batteries for it. You know, and then we were clever enough to save up any penny scratched together, any penny that we could get, and then we ended up with the, um, the you know, the outlets, you know, so we could plug it in. And that's what we do with our Game Boys. But that's what my parents were trying to do, is trying to save as much money as possible. We were living out in the country, and um, living out in the country, having a, um, well, I'm just going to say, man, we had well water, we had a specific electric company supplying power to our home which was just outrageous you know the pricing on them uh, and we had wood for heat we had a wood um, 
cook stove and we had fuel oil for backup in that home. And what we would do is every, every so often the, the heat would go out because we'd have to add a log or two or something like that down there in the basement. <clears throat> and ugh. this is let me just put it this way, when you're younger and you're growing up and you have to chop wood, you know, it's not it's not like you, you'd enjoy to do that. It's more of a you know, kind of a punishment. Like, get out there and chop some wood. Well, yeah, I remember hearing that, getting yelled at for that too. I was like, go out there and chop some wood. We're gonna need it for winter. Because we'd have a cord or so of wood come out. That's what they would call it a cord, something like that. It's a unit of measurement for it. And we would get this huge pile of wood that we'd have to um, splitting them all, chop it up into smaller pieces to put it inside the fireplace everything to the um, to the blowing heat fire wood cook stove um, yeah the furnace as well yeah so it's just you know one of those things where we had to do a lot of extra moving it around too because it wasn't just on the side of the it was on the side of the garage then we had to move it a few feet over to an actual room that was built off of the house and it had a storm drain cover on it and it was a wood room and it's where you store all your wood so that it would stay dry because you would, you don't want wet, wet wood when you go into a fireplace maybe you do maybe you don't it depends on, on how you'd want to run it so that it would stay longer or last longer but yeah uh, give me a second here But yeah, as we were out in the country, I remember playing this one for just ever grinding. I didn't want to beat the game, I just wanted to grind. Just wanted to, you know, keep playing it, keep playing it, encounter after encounter. Um, it was like, a, I think the ice claw was the last weapon or item that I picked up on this game for, for uh, you know, advancing into it before we parted with it and got those Game Boys. See, on the Game Boy, we ended up with, uh, was it Mega Man 2? Castlevania, Mega Man 2, and a few others that were just, you know, they were awesome. You know, but this game right here was incredible for the time. Um, you see, my parents thought that Final Fantasy Mystic Quest was Final Fantasy 2. You know, I mean, like they confused it because they, they saw that Final Fantasy name and they're like, okay, well, let's get Mystic Quest because it was more affordable. And yeah, this it's nothing like um, the Final Fantasy series. It, it really isn't. It's basically its own game. I got a lot of fuzz around here. Speaking of, she's right there. But yeah, last night I had a blast. Saying Kryptonite by Three Doors Down. Uh, and saying uh, Epiphany by Stain. And it's been a while by Stain. It was really, really fun. And I have my brother come up with me and we're duetting it. I wanted to go out to make sure that I showed my support. Because my, uh, My DJ, he is an airman, and he's a fellow brother at arms. And he was having some health issues, and we wanted to make sure that we went out there and we ended up showing him our 
gratitude and our support. Alright, give me a second. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up. Yeah, but as I was saying, I, was like, I really just wanted to uh, go out last night and show my support. Ended up having a really good time. Something unusual happened on a personal level. I was like, I've never had anybody um, just. I've never had a woman come up and tell me that I was attractive the way that this lady did. <laughs> this is put it that way. I've never heard any woman say it as thought out and complimentary as she had. And it was, it was just, I was, it was flattering. I was like, wow, really? Thank you. Thank you so very much. And, you know, the silly part about it is that I was telling my, my brother, you know, the one that comes up and sings with me, that, uh, that I myself had said something earlier about her being attractive as well. And she, she has the smile of Nev Campbell from, you know, her earlier works in movies as an actor. And, yeah. So, yeah, it, it was a really amazing evening. It, and it, it had showed you, we had like 80 plus people arrive in a small establishment. And of course we have a, a capacity limit because of what's going on, but yeah, we really wanted to bring tables together like we used to do back in the day. But nowadays we're not able to do that. Some limitations, but I noticed that no one was sniffling or coughing or doing any of that nonsense or that business showing up at the bar with it. You know, like they, no way. And if somebody did have that, I'm sure that somebody would have said something. Not a Karen. Just I'm just saying, like someone would have said something. Please leave. We don't want to catch your germs. I think it would have done it right there. Yeah, or they would not have been served or, you know, something like, you know, of, of a uh, more of a, a polite manner to say, hey, you know, not to be rude or like, we don't serve your kind to your kind of thing. You know, no, 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 it's not like that. Oh man, could you imagine that nowadays? Oh, could you imagine the uproar you would hear? Somebody pull in that. Still working on this. I have the actual camera zoomed in a little bit with that digital zoom. Yeah, so that you know. I'm gonna work on that. Get that old flux off the board. I don't have to, but I, I see it and I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm going to. Just... I think I might as well while I'm in here. And we see that the uh, saves are gone. I will change the battery out in this particular cartridge. I want to see what that looks like with that um, other. I don't know if you guys want to hear that or not. I mean, I can make some a little bit of ASMR out of that if you want. Or yeah, AMSR or ASMR.
Super Nintendo games are just awesome to clean. That looks really good. Alright. Get started on the other side. Yeah, I, I noticed that the lens flaring didn't happen either. It, it's just the, you know, the white background. These, uh, this Galaxy Mega 2 that I'm using for a camera. Yeah, it, it doesn't like that. My apologies, I'm just making sure, looking around, seeing any corrosion along these components here, because one of our Nintendo games, the original Nintendo games, had that problem. Let's collect up any residue from breath and stuff on there. See that? Uh, that's breath. That's baked on breath from years and years of people blowing on it. <laughs> uh, it's true too. And then whenever you see somebody using one of those one-up cards, and you see how gross that card gets over the time frame of using it, you may want to start wearing gloves when you handle that card, because that's just, you know, years worth of gross. And it's very unsanitary to blow on your cartridge. But I guess whatever works for you works for you. It's your card, it's yours, you know. If you're willing to spend the the uh, the time and patience of inserting it and taking it out, inserting it and taking it out and Trying to get it going again, but blowing on it. Go for it. This is on myself personally. This is the way I would do it. It's like whenever I find a new game, and if I find it, and the and the seller is willing to uh, barter with me, which I love the most. You know, so I, I'm not willing to pay that full price for something. And if I'm going in there and I'm going to hit the uh, the little you know, watch button and then somebody offers me like 10% back, you know, like 10% off, I'm like, um, that's awesome. Thank you very much. Or a little bit over. If it's under that much, it's a kind of like an eyebrow raise. It's like, mm, somebody's, you know, let me check their account, see what they're selling too. And if they're not selling other games, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and get it. But if they're selling nothing but video games... And they're they're not willing to even give you a ten percent discount on it through you know say your favorite buy site. Mm, question it, look at it, thinking do you really need to get it from that particular person versus somebody else? That's a smaller mom you know mom and pop shop. I'm just saying, you know it's it's just supply and demand, and the, the basics of it. Oh, um, be sure to wear your safety glasses while doing this, so you don't get any of this media from the eraser or whatever materials that you might be using to get up into your eyes. Okay, I'm going to do something that I probably should have done a long time ago. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to do half of this particular cartridge. And I'm going to show the shine that this does versus not. I mean, I'll complete it, but I was just making sure that I just want to make sure you guys see what it looks like after the before and after. how much of an improvement this does. Can 
you see the dullness right here versus the it, it takes almost all of that off the etching of it and I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I'm not trying to deceive anybody with the uh, you know the movement of the cart or the PCB but you just you can see the difference the eraser does right along here and this is where I hit I, I missed it like right over to here that's all eraser right here and this right here has not been done so yeah it's effective I was just looking online, like, okay, what can I use to, to buff out cartridges easier than just scrubbing away on them with a soft eraser? You know, just, just an extra little step to help myself out. And that's what I found, and I was like, oh, and it's rechargeable, and it, and when after I got it, I was like, wow, for how long it lasts. talk about the game now. I think I'm, I'm good on the reminiscing part and rec, you know recalling of when I first played it. Sorry about that noise. If you can hear it, that's my dehumidifier going. Yeah, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. I think my favorite part was when I grabbed that axe and I chopped that tree down to get a little further. I was like, okay, that that took a little while to get to that point, you know, just just to get the to the battle axe area. And and I, I believe that's the first what the first boss in the game too. You know, it's like, but like I said, I haven't played it in such a long time that I really don't recall too much of the game itself anymore. I just, I, I remember playing it and I absolutely loved it. And that's why I wanted it again. Because it's, you know, it's great to have part of the collection. And I love Final Fantasy games. I, I'm, I'm trying to get them all. I'm, the only one I'm missing right now is 3 or 6. You know, like 3, 6 on the Super Nintendo. 3. That's, that's the only one I'm missing right now that I really want as part of the collection. Anything past, what, 9? Or Crystal? Chronicles on the GameCube. I'm not too uh, I'm really hesitant on picking them up because this is going to take a long time to beat them. Like, really a long time to beat them. And they're a lot more um, cinematography, like cinema, like a movie. I just, I don't know, I like the uh, the blockiness of the original Final Fantasy 7, the blockiness of the original Final Fantasy 1. You know, I, I'm looking for the Japanese uh, Famicom version of Final Fantasy 2 and 3. Those would be really cool. I don't even want them, I, I, I might get them, trans, you know, the translated versions of them. Maybe. You know, like, the ROM hacks of ROM um cracks or something like that, or the English translation versions. But I still want the, the Famicom versions of them, too. Or, what I'd do is I'd, I might play them on the emulation with the English translation, right? Play it until you really remember it. And then after you do that, go on the actual console with the Famicom version of the game and play it up to that point of where you're at on the English translation. That would work. That would work very well. And that way you'd, you'd be able to beat them on both. Because see, right, right now I'm working on uh, the... Uh, what is it? 
Zelda no uh, Densetsu. Densetsu? I believe it's the I have it over there. I'm Hyrule Fantasy. That's when I'm trying to beat the, the uh, quest two. And I don't know if I'm going to be making the full video of it or not. Yeah, it's another RPG. Kind of game thing. That's what it... That looks amazing. That looks really good. Alright. This should play immediately in the console. But before we do that, let's check the battery, make sure the battery is actually of the proper value. If we're at hmm, 3.2, we should change it. Can you see that? Probably not. Sorry, I'm trying to get this so you can see the actual display on that. Okay, let me turn the lights on. You know what? I'll end up probably having to flip the cartridge over anyway. Just to get those posts. And the pin and this pin's gonna be positive or this pin's gonna be negative. Three volts. Not bad for 1990. Do you see that? The 3.02 volts. Hmm. Give me a second here. Yep. There you go. I hope that helped out with anybody. I'm curious as to what the voltage would be on this. But yeah. Let's go ahead and put it together and put it in the console and give her a shot. Hey everyone, I'm back. Let's play a quick game of Final Fantasy Mystic Quest using the Game Genie Video Game Enhancer. Here are the codes we're going to use. Hit the pause button. You got them? Oh, if it would focus. There you go. Boop. We'll use level again. I think that'll be the only one that I would like to use at the moment. I'm gonna start a new game out too. Recording? We are recording. I hope everybody's having a wonderful evening or night or day. And that would be level gain. <clears throat> One thing I do have to say that's impressive about playing Final Fantasy Mystic Quest is the ability to jump. Especially in a RPG style game. I think that's really cool. You know, not just in combat either, like just being able to play it like outright you need to jump like and it has like certain spots where you need to use it. it comes in handy, I like it. There's unique mechanics to the game.
I'd like to say thank you also very much for watching. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you for all my wonderful subscribers, followers. I love how in combat when the enemy changes its form, when it's been damaged. That's awesome. The reason why I chose this path is that she would have been more of taking damage and almost dying <clears throat> versus my player right now with just being solo. It's like, yeah, if she could heal and stuff, but it's like, I'm not, I'm not too concerned with the level of game that I'm getting. I should just come back in here a few times and level my character up.
Yeah, no random encounters. You know, no random encounters. It's just the um, you see the enemy before you are in combat. I don't mind that. See, I played the uh, Lagoon as well about the same time frame where I would rent that game and I would play a Lagoon. And that's, I, I, it's very close to this, you know, in playstyle, I mean, actually that's a little more um, hands-on, like you have to be careful where you attack. Actually, I, I might clean that cart here, um, here next and have that up for the video. I think that'd be a good idea. It'd be fun. You know how long of a grind this would be in farming of experience points if I didn't have the game genie? I couldn't imagine it. It's like nowadays I don't have the patience for it. Now when I know I could utilize a um, an enhancer like that to reach the objective of getting my health and my MP and all that all up there for stats. That's why I'm looking for a uh, PlayStation so that when I'm playing my Final Fantasy Chronicles and the Final Fantasy IV, I could create my own and generate my own codes with the uh, GameShark. And that GameShark Pro was one of my favorite things. And I actually have a notebook of all my codes that I generated way back in the day. I wrote them all down. Not to make this too tedious, I'm gonna go ahead and continue on now. I believe I'm on level 12. I shouldn't be too bad now. Get a little progress. into these uh, enemies is really, really
what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pause it, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and, and just annihilate this um, five more of these, and then I'll, I'll come back. Well, I think that does it. Thank you all so very much for watching. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Be healthy. Stay safe. Happy gaming, everyone.